This is a PixHawk flight controller and it speaks the Mavlink protocol. When you plug it in, you get this massive stream of events telling you everything that's going on, including information about the servos, the orientation of the device, the attitude and altitude, local positions, global positions. You have to make sense of these data streams in order to figure out how to interact with this flight controller correctly. Mavlink is an open source project on GitHub. You can read about it here, and it'll tell you how to generate code that you can include in your application for talking that protocol. But the protocol is actually very simple. It's really just a compilation of different message formats that you can send and receive to the flight controller. For example, here's a message that tells you about the orientation of the device. Now, suppose we want to cause the drone to take off, we might need to send a takeoff command with these arguments. But when is it the right time to send takeoff? What state does the flight controller have to be in? And how can we reason about that state machine? One way to learn about Mavlink is to use an existing app that knows how to speak the Mavlink protocol, like Q Ground Control. Let's run it. Hold flight mode. This will actually connect to my PixHawk flight controller and show me what's going on. I can see the sensor data being displayed here, plus a GPS map of where the uh, drone is currently located. If you don't want to actually connect this to a real quadrocopter with propellers and all that kind of stuff, you can actually use a simulator. JMavSim is also open source and free. I can now come along with Q Ground Control. I can arm the drone. Armed. Hold flight mode. And I can tell it to take off. Take off flight mode. Since it's connected to the simulator, it's actually flying now, but it's still using the Pixhawk hardware to do the actual flight. Down at the bottom of Q Ground Control, we can now see the sort of things that we're allowed to do once we've taken off. We can do a stop, we can land, we can pause, we can change the altitude, or we can click on the map and tell it to fly to a certain location. Hold flight mode. So I'm learning now, using this UI, about the kind of state machine that's actually implemented inside the flight controller. When you close Mavlink, you can actually save the log file. Now we can load this log and take a look at the Mavlink messages that are in there. So here we see that there were attitude messages. We can see that we did two different flights for a few seconds, you know, about a minute each. We can see all of the different Mavlink messages that were received, including heartbeats, which are important. We can also map the flights that we just did. And as we saw on the Q ground control, there are actually two separate flights here, one in this direction, one back here. And we can take a look at the motor outputs or the uh, altitude and graph that as we did those two flights. So now I want to write an app that controls the drone. But before I do that, I want to better understand the actual PX4 firmware that runs inside the PixHawk. This code is available on GitHub here. I loaded this code into Eclipse, and I found a commander module that handles most of the important Mavlink messages. This code contains lots of state machinery and figuring out valid state transitions. There's even a state table here. I don't want to write this kind of code. It's not only error prone, but it's also tedious. Instead, I decided to use the new P programming language from MSR to try and model the Pixhawk state machine more formally. Here's an example P program. In P, machines, states, and events are first class constructs. This machine is monitoring the battery level. When it is initialized, it tells the PX4 to send battery status messages at the rate of 10 per second, and it subscribes to receive those Mavlink messages. We created some glue code that maps Mavlink into P events. Then it starts monitoring them. When it notices the battery level dip below 20%, it publishes a battery critical event that other state machines can react to. Similarly, we can monitor the altitude. This machine defines a set target altitude event, and when a target is set, it watches the local position messages from the PX4. When it gets within a given delta of the target, it publishes an altitude reached event. This machine monitors a geofence. In other words, it raises an event if the drone flies too far away from a given home location. This machine also subscribes to the local position messages, and if the drone flies outside the given radius, it raises a geofence reached event. This machine monitors GPS health. Here it is looking at several Mavlink messages that give us an overall idea of the health of the GPS signal. The GPS status tells us how many satellites we're locked onto. 
The GPS raw message tells us how precise our location is and what type of fix we have. The global position messages tell us we are now receiving GPS locations. So if the fix type is good, we have more than five satellites and the precision is less than 10 meters, then we're ready to publish an event saying that we have a GPS lock. We also need to monitor the heartbeat message from the Pixhawk. This uses a timer so that if we do not get a heartbeat within 10 seconds, then we publish a heartbeat status changed event saying that the Pixhawk is no longer alive. Okay, now comes the fun part. We can now create a flight controller machine that uses all these monitor signals to fly the drone. This flight controller will respond to events asking us to arm, disarm, take off, go to a location, land, and so on. It will maintain some internal state based on what it has seen so far. To start off, it subscribes to all of those monitor events as well as some Mavlink events. Then it creates all those monitor machines and tells the system we're ready for business. This causes the Mavlink message streams to start publishing into our P program. The flight controller machine has a bunch of states, including standby, no GPS, low battery, geofence breached, disarming, armed, taking off, loitering, going someplace, landing, and so forth. Let's take a look at one of these. The taking off state happens when we receive a takeoff event while we're in the armed state. An altitude is specified with this event, and we can now tell the altitude monitor to start watching for that altitude. And we can send a takeoff command to the PX4. So at this point, what can happen? Well, the takeoff command could succeed or fail. We could reach the target altitude, in which case we go into the loitering state, or we could have crashed, which obviously is bad. We could, ha we could be asked to land in the middle of taking off. That's fine. We'll go to the landing state. But if we're asked to disarm, we better refuse to do that because that could be dangerous. OK, with this, we can now create a simple flight plan and test this thing. The mission planner machine creates a flight path in the shape of a square box. It subscribes to those events coming from the flight controller machine. And when the flight controller is ready, it starts the mission. When it is armed, it takes off to 5 meters using a takeoff command. When it reaches that altitude, it starts loitering, it starts the path. The follow path state executes each segment of that path, tracks the local position, Mavlink messages. When it reaches each corner, it goes to the next segment. Each segment uses the go to command to the PX4, and when there are no more segments, it sends a command to land the drone. OK, let's try it out. This GitHub open source project provides the P compiler and the P runtime, which we've integrated into Visual Studio. This allows us to compile all of those P programs and generate C code that represents those state machines. This is the generated C code, which contains all those fun state tables and transitions, which I didn't want to have to write by hand. My test program has a command line argument that tells us what the UDP address is of the simulator that we want to connect to. In this case, the simulator is running inside an Ubuntu virtual machine. This simulator is connected to the PX4. OK, now we're ready to run our program. Press F5. And it's found a heartbeat. It's initialized the state machines here. It's done a takeoff command. It's now executing the first segment of the path in the mission. Second path. We can see what those paths have actually converted to in terms of actual global GPS coordinates. and local coordinates. So we see the box 0, 10, 0, 0, so it's coming back home. And now it sends the landing command. Drone is landing. And eventually the drone will detect that it is actually on the ground, which will tell our state machine to go back to the initial state. There we go. Disarming the drone. And we have done our first safe flight of a drone using a P program. OK, that was a little bit hard to see everything that just happened. So the test program also supports a command line argument to output all the state transitions to a DGML diagram, which we can view inside Visual Studio. 
Visual Studio has a graph viewer and we're going to use that to watch what happens. This is a template of all of the states that are defined. Here's our flight controller machine with all of its states. We actually have a pub submachine called the orb which sends all those messages to and from all of these things. Here's your monitoring machines that we looked at. So let's watch what this program does at runtime visually. So the drone is flying and all of these events are streaming in Mavlink messages. We're in the loitering state. We're going someplace. We're following a path. And indeed, that's what the drone is doing right now. Once it's finished that path, I'll come back and I'll flip to the landing state. Meanwhile, all those monitors are busily doing what they're supposed to do. Altitude monitor is busy. We're processing commands. We're watching the battery. Everything looks good. We're landing. And once we reach the ground, it should jump from landing state back to armed, and from then it should disarm the drone and go back to initial state. So that's it. We've now completed our first mission and we can see the visualization of all of that. We can also go back through here and look at every individual message. So what is that message? We can hover over. We can see that was a published message. When we started the missions, it sent mission disarm. It sent takeoff. And over here, it said mission arm. So you can actually look at all of the events that happened during the execution of this program. If we select all of the events, we can see we explored the state machine pretty pretty fully. Now the interesting thing is, can we test the state machine using p-test tools to find out if there's any sequence of events that could happen in the state machine that could cause problems? And we found several bugs doing that.